Welcome back to Logic 101, I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is my second killer proof strategy, working backward. To see why this is useful, let's look at the following example. We have three premises. Premise one is R or S. Premise two is a little complicated. It says not, begin parentheses, not P or Q, and parentheses there, or Q and overall parentheses. And premise three says P and not Q implies not R. And what we want to prove here is that S is true. S is our conclusion. So if you aren't really sure where you want to go with this proof, my second killer proof strategy is to start at the end and work your way backward. That is, figure out what is sufficient to prove the conclusion. And then rather than try to prove the conclusion, prove those other things. Because by virtue of the fact that they're sufficient to prove the conclusion, if you can prove those other things, you have successfully completed the proof. In other words, you're really just changing the intended target here to something that you think is going to be a little bit easier to prove than the conclusion that you're supposed to prove. So to see what's going on here, let's go ahead and expand this one out. We know that the end of this proof is going to say S on the last line. We want to conclude S, so S is going to appear on the last line. Well, how might we eventually get to proving S? If we look through the premises, we see that S only appears in one of those premises, premise one, R or S. If we think about how we would be able to get S to fall out of line one, it's really simple. We, need, we would need to know that not R is true. If we know that not R is true, then using line one and using the line not R through disjunctive syllogism, we would have S being true as well. So it's pretty clear that this proof is ultimately not going to be about solving for S, but rather solving for not R. If we get not R, then our proof is complete. So you can notice here on the justification, I'm leaving a question mark there with the line number because we don't really know where not R is going to appear in this proof quite yet. So we're going to have to hold off on that and we're going to have to go back and fix that justification later on. All right, so now we know that this proof is not about showing S, but showing, about, uh, showing not R. So then the question becomes, how do we go about showing not R? Is there anything else we can do working backward to help ourselves out a little bit? The answer is yes. We actually see not R appear explicitly in an earlier part of the proof, rather specifically in line three. Premise three says P and not Q implies not R. So rather than thinking about this as a proof trying to show not R, what we really need to do is show that P and not Q are true. If we're able to do that, then by line three and the line that says P and not Q, we would be able to get not R through modus ponens, and then having not R would allow us to get to S. So again, what we've done here is we said that this proof really isn't about S, it's about finding not R. And then we said, well, it's not actually really about finding not R, it's about finding P and not Q. So now our task is to figure out how we can show that P and not Q are true. There's really not much else we can do working backward here. So that being the case, let's go back up to our premises and see if there's anything else we can do. Well, we haven't touched line two yet. So premise two, what can we do with that? If you remember back to my other killer proof strategy, proof strategy number one, it said to De Morgan's everything, and this seems like a strong candidate for De Morgan's. We have a disjunction and a negation on the outside, so if we De Morgan's that, we will have a much cleaner expression. And in fact, if we apply De Morgan's to line two, we get not not P or Q and not Q. The next tip I gave in that killer proof strategy to use De Morgan's is when you get this conjunction, break it down into its component parts. So for line five, we are just going to erase the first half of line four through simplification. We have not Q and notice that's one of the things that we needed to show at the bottom there. We need to show that P and not Q are true and we now have half of it. The other thing that we show is through simpli uh, simplification of line four that not not P or Q is true. And we can clean that statement up a little bit. We have a double negation there. So if we apply double negation to line six, we get P or Q. Well, now this proof really should be coming into focus. If we look at lines five and seven, we have P or Q and not Q, which means P needs to be true 
through disjunctive syllogism. And you'll notice now that lines 5 and 8 give us P and not Q, which is exactly what we said we needed to be able to prove that not, or rather that S is in fact true, that we can conclude S based off of that. And so if we do a little bit more filling in here and cleaning up the projected proof by working backward, we fill in those line numbers in the justification. Well, now suddenly we're done. By working backward, we were able to change what we were targeting with our conclusion to something a little bit easier to conclude. And once we concluded that, we were very easily able to conclude the original conclusion. So that's my second killer proof strategy, work backward. Hope you enjoy this, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.